Hi, I'm Apostle Evans, and I would like to minister to you today from this subject, according to your faith, according to your faith. You know, God likes it when we exercise great faith. Yes. When, when we act as though anything were possible. Amen. Um, the more we venture out into the unimaginable, the more excited God gets. Yes. Amen. Now, I want to challenge you today uh, to take the religious limits off God Amen. and dream and pray big. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, I was in a meeting, uh, I guess it was yesterday, um, and there were a lot of women in that meeting. And, uh, you know, they were talking about various concerns. And one woman was talking about her battle with cancer. And it grieved me because I could, I could hear, she was a good woman, a good woman. But I could hear her lack of faith. And something in me rose up and said, you, you don't have to deal with it that way. Because she was dealing with it like there was a closed ceiling over her head when actually it was open. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Listen, everything is still possible yes, with God. Amen. Praise, Praise God. Let me read a little scripture here today. You know, the Bible says, when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy. He was sick of it, I like to say. And Jesus said, can you guess what he said? He said, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. Praise God. Amen. The man didn't even have to ask him to heal him. All the man did was announce the fact that the servant was sick. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Amen. That's what I'll do. Praise God. Amen. You know, this speaks to God's willingness to help us yes, sir. if we'll only dream big. Yes, sir. And then, while they were on their way to the centurion's house, the centurion comes up with another idea. He says, look, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. So, just speak the word only. Let's save ourselves some time. Yes, amen. Just speak the word only. Because I know how this works. I'm a man in authority. I understand how authority works. And I know that you walk in authority. Yes, it's just a matter of who has the authority do we have it or does sickness and disease or any other ailment, depression, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's, we need to dream big. Yes, sir. Amen. All things are possible with God. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, you don't even have to come to my house to come to think of it. I love his faith. Amen. Jesus marveled. He said, I've never seen so great faith. I don't, I don't even have to go to your house. Amen. You, don't, you, don't, you don't need to see me lay hands on her. Amen. You don't need me to come and lay hands and pray and 
jerking, <laughs> gyrate. <laughs> All I have to do is speak the word and she will be healed. I've never seen any faith like that in all of Israel. And I've been looking. Amen. I've been looking. Jesus is still looking for faith. Yes, He's still looking for great faith. Yes, Amen. And the only way we're going to have great faith is take the limits off of God. Amen. Praise God. Now, you might say, well, who are you talking to? I'm talking to you. All things are possible for you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says that God will give good things to those that ask him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see God giving you good things. So ask for them. You, you say, when? Whenever. Amen. Whenever. Um, you say, where? Go before God. Amen. At the throne of grace. Yes, sir. Why? Because... It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How do you do it? You ask boldly. Yes, sir. With great directness and plainness of speech. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. You know, our results in life are according to our faith. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, much of the time, it's, it's, it's our faith, mm -hmm. yes, not God's will, yes, that Amen. determines our results. Yes, sir. I'm going to say that again. It's our faith, not God's will, that determines our results. Amen. Yes, you know, we, we have to remember this, that God is not limited. Amen. Yes, sir. God is not limited. You know, that's, that's my first point. God is not limited. Amen. You know, most success gurus say, it, it, this is where you begin. If you could do anything, what would you do? That's where success begins. Yes, sir. You know, um, here's one of my favorite scriptures. The Bible says, that when it was announced to Sarah that she was going to have a child when she was past 89 years old, she laughed. She said, that is the funniest thing I have ever heard. I'm gonna have a child after I've passed the time of life because you know it had ceased to be with her after the manner of women yes. she laughed and the Lord said it's a shame that God had to ask this question but the Lord said is anything too hard for God? Amen. We need to ask ourselves that question. Amen. Because we're inundated with limited thinking. Yes, sir. 
you know, you turn on the television, they tell you, oh, this disease is incurable. You see, something rose up in me when I was in that meeting. And, you know, I, I had to minister. I had to pray the word of God. Yes, sir. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace Hallelujah. was upon him. And with his stripes, yes, we were healed. And if we were healed, we are healed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I see you taking the limits off of God. Is anything too hard for God? Yeah. Think about that. I don't care what it is. Is it too hard? I mean, that's being very facetious, you know? But is it? Because why are we limiting him? We, the only reason why we could be limiting him is we think, you know, Maybe this is too hard for God. Or we think maybe God is not willing. He told the man, he said, I will come and heal her. I will come. I will. I will. That means it's my will to come. Yes, sir. I'm telling you today, it's God's will to heal you. Hallelujah. Amen. Everywhere you hurt. Amen. In Jesus' name. Is anything too hard? You know, the Bible says that one time Jesus said these words. How hardly? Because he, he was talking to a rich man about giving away his possessions. And the rich man went away sorrowful. And Jesus said, in the presence of his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter the kingdom of heaven? But then he said, with men, this is impossible. But not with God. Hallelujah. Say that with me. But not with God. Not with God. See, we, we have to make a difference between you know, what's possible and what's possible with God. Amen. And we have God on our side. Amen. And we're living as though, you know, possibilities for the world are possibilities for us. Amen. That's not true. Yes, with man, some things are impossible. But not with God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Why? Because with God, all things are still possible. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. They weren't just possible in the Bible. They're still today possible. Yes, sir. You know. Peter began to say to Jesus, well, Lord, we've left everything and followed you. What, what are we going to have? Jesus said, there is no man. None. Not even you. Not even me. There is no man that has left house or brethren or father or mother or wife or children or lands or property or silver and gold for my sake and the gospels but he shall receive watch this a hundredfold now in this time Amen. see we gotta quit believing what we see we gotta stop believing what we hear we need to believe what the word of God says Amen. yes sir so when, when, when are we going to have it? Now. Now in this time. Hallelujah. 
And if Jesus said now, in this time, then that's what I need to believe to take the limits off of God. I see you receiving the hundredfold now in this time. Praise God. Well, let me go on to my second point. Because we need to be free to think in new and different ways. Yeah. You know, another success guru said, how would you view your business if you went across the street and looked towards your business and viewed it as a man from Mars. See, you wouldn't have any of the limitations. You would, you would look at it and you would say, why did he do this that way? Why did he do it that way? There are other ways to do it. See, this man thought outside of the box. He said, come to think of it, you don't even need to go to my house. Yes, Amen. Come to think of it, that's not even necessary. That's the way everybody does it, but it's not necessary. I know you go to everybody's house and heal them, but it's not necessary. Just speak the word only, and my daughter shall be healed. Yes, sir. Praise God. You need the freedom to think in new and different ways. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, the, um, the Bible says, while he spake these things, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, my daughter is, is, is now dead. Now she's dead already. <laughs> but come and lay your hand on her. And she shall live. God. You've got to think in new and different ways. Yes. See, the traditional way was if she's dead, it's too late. Y'all won't say nothing. Amen. Praise God. If she's dead, it's over with. If she's dead, there's a period. But when you think in new and different ways, you say, why does it have to be a period? It can be a comma. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because see, if you come and lay your hand upon her, then it's going to be a different story. Praise yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus arose and followed him. See, that tells you something about the will of God. People say, is it God's will? I don't know if it's God's will or if it be thy will. Listen, Jesus said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. Yes. So you've already seen what the Father's will is. Yes. Because whatever Jesus' will is, that's the Father's will, too. Amen. And Jesus said, I will come. And Jesus followed him. And so did his disciples. Yes, sir. Uh, in Matthew 9 and 20, it says, Behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years. Now you know if you've had something 12 years, you know, you, you learn to live with it. But she came behind him in the press 
and touch the hem of his garment. That's outside the box thinking. Yes, amen. If I can just touch the hem of his garment. <laughs> I'll be made whole. Yes, amen. You know. When they came to the ruler's house. The people were making all kinds of noise, doing all kind of mourning. Just, the Bible says they were making the noise. You know, we have to ignore the noise. Yes, sir. He said, get out of here. That's thinking outside the box, isn't it? Amen. Yes. For the maid is not dead. So, so get out of here. The maid is not dead, but sleepeth. That's a different way of looking at things. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And he wasn't ashamed to say it in front of everybody. She's not dead. I see you having what you say. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You know, Martha said, Lord, if you had been here, this wouldn't have even happened. My brother would not have died. But then she followed it up saying, but I know that even now, some of us need to say, even now, yes, Amen. even though I've lost the job, even though I've gotten fired, even though my child is sick, even now, I'm, I'm getting excited, you know. Amen. Even now, I know that whatever you ask God for, he'll give it to you. But see, the truth is, now he'll give it to us. Yes, yes, sir. He will give it to us. Amen. Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. She said, I know he'll rise in, in the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. Yes, sir. Amen. I got to elevate your thinking. Don't talk to me about no resurrection. I am the resurrection. Amen. Yes, amen. Praise God. I see your life being resurrected. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And then he asked this question. He said, whoever believes in me, whoever lives and believes in me, shall never die. Do you believe this? See, it's a matter of what you believe. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I'm a believer. I believe. Amen. And I believe you're a believer. And I believe you believe. Yes. Amen. You know, uh, then her faith failed her again. He said, take away the stone. She said, wait a minute, Lord. Let's go on a bit, a bit far. By now he stinketh. He said, woman, didn't I tell you back there that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Amen. I see you seeing the glory of God in your life. Then I need to hurry to a close. And the third thing is, we, we, we have to learn to ask big Amen. and ask boldly. Praise God. Praise God. One, one translation says, be blunt. 
See, it's not politically correct anymore to be blunt. But you've got to be with the Lord. Yes, that man said, as a matter of fact, Lord, you listen, I'm I'm not, I'm not, I'm not right. I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not right. <laughs> and I know it's not necessary for you to go to my house so we can quit playing that game. I said we can stop all that. Amen. Yes, sir. Because I know it's not necessary for you to come to my house. That may be the way other people do it, but I know we don't have to do that. There's no sense in us front. Amen. Just speak the word only. And my servant or my daughter shall be healed. Listen. You got to be bold. You got to be outspoken. Amen. Forget political correctness. Be bold. Be blunt. Be straight to the point. Be direct. Amen. 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 Praise God. I see you getting more out of life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says, let us come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. That we may obtain. See, your boldness determines whether or not you obtain it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I see that. You might as well be bold. Your father knows what you have need of before you ask. Yes, Amen. But you need to ask. Yes. Amen. Ask and it shall be given. There, there is nothing to wonder about. Yes. If you ask, it shall be given. God has a willingness on, on our behalf to give us. It's, it's, it's his pleasure yes. to give us the kingdom. Amen. The Bible says, what man is there of you whom if his son asked bread, would he give him a stone? And if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give good things to them that ask him? I see you asking you know the Bible says there's two of you I like to get a partner and you don't have to have one you can get it you can get whatever you want from God by yourself but it helps to have a partner. Because the Bible says, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. I see you asking boldly. Amen. It shall be done for them by the Father which is in heaven. Now, that's Jesus speaking. Either it's true or it's a lie. Amen. I choose to believe it's true. Amen. Yes, amen. Matthew 21, 22. All things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive it. Okay, I'll try it again. All things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive it, then why not be bold? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Because you know, here's how we are. We ask for an old piece of house. Because we think that's what we can get. Yes, sir. See, we ask for an old piece of anything. Because we don't want to bother the Lord too much. We don't, we don't, we don't want to overdo it. But the Bible says, come boldly. You know, I, I, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I'm going to go ahead. Uh, it's kind of risky because it's unorthodox. But God asked Solomon, what do you want? Solomon said, uh, wisdom and understanding heart. God said, man, uh, I'm going to give you that, but I'm going to give you what you failed to ask for. I see you asking for everything you want. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You know, the Bible says, thus saith the Holy One of Israel. Is that okay? Yeah. If, if it's the Holy One of Israel, he, he says, ask of me of things to come. And concerning the work of my hands, watch this, command ye me. Now, you can't be any more blunt than that. Mm -hmm. Command ye me. Mm -hmm. You mean, Lord, I, I... It's unthinkable. I see you doing the unimaginable and the unthinkable. In Jesus' name. You know, Jesus said... In that day, you shall ask me nothing. No, I don't ask him nothing. He said, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. And I don't ask him nothing. But he said, whatever you ask the Father in my name. Hmm. See, I ask the Father in Jesus' name. You should too. Amen. Yes. Ask the Father in Jesus' name. Yeah. I see you getting what you asked for. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So, let me summarize. We must remember that God is not limited. Yeah. Nothing is too hard for him. We need to take the limits off of God. We've got to pray bigger. Remember David and Goliath? See, David thought big. Yes, sir. Yeah. Saul and his army, they were hiding and, you know, cringing in, in front of Goliath in light of his challenges. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Mm -hmm. I think bigger than that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. I see you having a big God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Remember Moses at the Red Sea? He was like, oh, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do. God said, what is that in your hand? See, he's elevating his thinking. Yes, sir. And Moses said, well, it's, it's a rod. He said, didn't I do miracles with that rod before? Raise it up. And the sea parted. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Amen. Remember Jesus and Lazarus? They were like, oh, Lord, by this time he's sick. He said, oh, God. Lazarus, come forth. That's a different kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen. I see all things being possible for you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We must be free to think in new and different ways. You know, when I think of practicing out-of-the-box thinking, I think about, um, 
this story my wife told me about a book she read and it was about blue ocean thinking. It said when we, um, now I'm trying to summarize it, but when, when there are a lot of sharks in the water and they're fighting and biting each other and, and fighting for food, you know, uh, the ocean is red. But if you go out far enough, you can find your blue ocean. And the blue ocean is where there's different kind of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, every, everything is not the same. Uh, there's room. There's room for unlimited thinking. Yes, and when you're in that red ocean where everybody's thinking the same, it's not good. Yes, you know, for years and years, nobody could, could uh, what was it, do a 10 minute mile? Or, I don't know. But for years, there was a limitation on how fast a mile could be run. Then one day, a guy who had blue ocean thinking, he broke the barrier. Mm -hmm. The year after that, there were high school kids breaking the barrier. Yes. You've got to get out of that red ocean. Yes, sir. Amen. And, and venture out into the blue ocean. Yes, sir. You got to think, what if? Yes, sir. Zion is in view, I tell you. Praise God. Zion is in view. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. We have to ask big and boldly. We need to take God at his word. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, great minds think big. Amen. They have an anything is possible point of view. So from today, don't ever let anybody limit your thinking. Yes. Amen. So what you don't have a college degree? Don't let yes. don't let anybody you understand? Yes. Amen. Stop you from thinking big. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And I say this in closing. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Amen. And when you pray, be bold. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm Apostle Evans, and this is Winning God's Way Ministries. Amen. Thank you.